And I bid you all grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's great to be with you for this devotion on Thursday, March the 11th year of our Lord 2021, as we continue looking at uh, our readings from this last Sunday. And today we arrive at the reading from Exodus chapter 20, where we hear the Ten Commandments laid out as God delivered them to Israel at Mount Sinai. And as we always play that game of, you know, why is this particular reading matched with the gospel? I think that in an odd sort of way, it's kind of the anti-gospel. Uh, if you remember, our gospel reading has Jesus cleansing the temple at the beginning of his uh, public ministry in Jerusalem. And one of the things that happened there is, right, they were not keeping that space around the temple as a holy space to the Lord. It wasn't set apart for the Lord's purposes. Whereas here, God is saying, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And, and so God uh, is, is calling Israel to a holiness that they clearly failed at. Uh, the first commandment, no other gods before me. The money changers, the animal sellers were putting that in place of, of God. So they were exalting that, that commerce and, and money making uh, above the Lord. And uh, then by going ahead and letting all that selling crowd out the worshipers at the Temple Plaza, I think in a certain sense they were using God's name in a vain way, right? They weren't treating God as something serious that we stand in awe of, but they were treating God as something like, okay, well, that's over there, but we've got money to make, we've got business to do. So I think if you reflect on the first three commandments and then you reflect on what was going on with the money changers and the selling of the animals at the Temple Plaza, you see a study in contrast, and again, why Jesus was so upset when he ended up chasing them out of there. So with that said, by way of introduction, let's hear the uh, Ten Commandments from Exodus. I'll be using the divine name when appropriate, and we've got this out of New King James. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, Yahweh, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, and showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yahweh, your God, in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh, your God, in it you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your strangers within your day gates. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land which Yahweh your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything else that is your neighbor's. Thus ends the commandments. Now, I think one of the things we have talked about at church a lot of times is that the commandments were not originally given as some sort of means by which to earn righteousness or prove one's goodness before God, right? God has already called Israel to himself, has already rescued them from Egypt, has already brought them to Mount Sinai as on eagle's wings, he says, and, and called them his special treasure. So the commandments aren't so much a prerequisite to fulfill in order to get a status, but they are given to Israel sort of delineating, here's what the blessed life looks like, here's what the good life looks like. And it begins, therefore, then, with recognizing that there's no other gods that can help you. There's no other gods you should serve. There's no other gods who will love you as God does. So that's the, the first call. Then with the not taking God's name in vain, what's interesting there is that uh, it, it don't use it in futile ways. Uh, so when we use God's name in futile ways, we're using it in ways that don't accomplish anything, right? If we call upon God, if we pray to God, if we give thanks to God, that accomplishes something. But if we use God's name to curse, if we use God's name to practice um, magic or something like that, that's futile. It's not going to accomplish anything. So, so don't, get, uh, don't get taken in by that. The other thing with uh, no other gods, right? The Lord warns that if you hate him and follow these other gods, there's going to be consequence. 
But then for those who keep his commandments and follow, he says, you have my chesed, right? There's our favorite word again. So God shows that mercy, that loving kindness, that steadfast love to all those who walk in his ways and, and live according to these commandments. Um, so then the Sabbath day to keep it holy. I think, again, the interesting thing here is that he links this all the way back to creation, right? God created everything that exists in six days and then on the seventh day rested from the work of creation. Not that he rested from all work, right? He continued upholding all things and maintaining life and goodness. But on the seventh day, he brought that to completion and rested. And, and what's the first thing he invites humans to do with it? He invites them to rest, right? Adam and Eve were created on the sixth day. They join Yahweh in the rest of the seventh day. That's the first day of the week to them. And it's the day of, of rest, the, the Sabbath. So um, we have that. And, and then keeping it holy means set apart for God's purpose and the purpose of the Sabbath day. The purpose of that rest was to go ahead and hear God's word, to worship God. And, and to uh, give him the praise that was due his name. Then when we get to the commandments about uh, how we live with one another, the interesting thing that I found in the Hebrew here is the uh, honor your father and your mother. Actually, it's an imperative. It's glorify your mother and father, right? Give them glory and honor and respect as God's representatives. And then this you know, filters over into other authorities that are established to bring order to our lives as well. Um, but that's the, the interesting one there, kabod, to give glory to them. Uh, because they are these representatives of God that were given you to raise you, to teach you, to bring you life, and, and to send you out into the world, uh, hopefully as ones who are prepared to serve and to love others as you have received love. Now, no murder, that's a pretty easy one. Uh, not committing adultery, all of that uh, makes sense. Uh, then don't steal, uh, don't uh, hurt your neighbor's reputation, don't give false witness. Uh, gosh, that's one that everyone seems to violate these days, but we are called to speak well. And, and those of you who are uh, well healed in the Lutheran Catechism, the Lutheran Small Catechism, remember we don't lie about our neighbor, we don't betray, slander, um, hurt reputation, but instead we defend them, we speak well of them, and we explain everything in the kindest way. And, you know, just think if our public discourse moved in that direction, how much better things would be. Then obviously, um, you shall not uh, covet your neighbor's house, do not covet your neighbor's wife, and anything else that is your neighbor's coveting uh, has to do again, not with just saying, gosh, it would be nice if I had a house in the south of France, or gosh, it would be nice if I had a new car. Coveting is when you look at something you don't have and say your life is deficient because of that. God has not done right at by you by not giving you those things that you wanted or you look at what your neighbor has and say it's not fair they have that they don't deserve it because then you're judging both God and judging your neighbor and that's not your job so those are the Ten Commandments there's much more we could say about them but that's enough for our devotion for today may God richly bless you we'll see you tomorrow and we'll take a look at our reading from first Corinthians until then God bless